So another thing I want to show you is the shift schedule. So this is also um, a unique feature implemented by Akala. So this allow you to uh, schedule a call to be invoked later in the blockchain. So there's no need to have like off-chain timers invoking smart contracts on certain time. You can just schedule a call and it will, it will be called uh, in the later. Uh, so this is the uh, interface of the assistant contract. So it takes the address, uh, how much uh, native token you would like to send. Uh, in our test it will be the SAV token. The guest limit for, for the call. So you, uh, the transition fee for this amount of guest limit will be reserved uh, upfront and if, and after the call is executed, if there are any leftovers, you will get refund later. And there's a storage limit. Uh, so let's see the state rent features, uh, also unique to Akala EVM. Uh, it's not enabled, so you just pass a big value for now for the testnet. And so let's see some minimum delay. So um, minimum amount of blocks before the scheduled call will be called. So if uh, you will notice uh, this number is a uh, number of blocks after the current block. So if you pass zero, this means the scheduled call will be scheduled in the next block. If you pass uh, one, this means that it will be um, called in the two blocks after the current block. And the input data, so is uh, well, the, just including the selectors and the parameters to the call. So to use the scheduler is super simple. Uh, this is a uh, recurring payment smart contracts. The idea is basically you, if you want to, for example, budgeting, do some budgeting, you have uh, say $10,000 for to spend in the next six months. You probably don't want to have all of them available because you might just spend all of them in the next two days. So you can deploy the recurring payment smart contracts, lock you all your money and for every uh, week um, send yourself some amount of money back. So um, yeah, that's a payable. So you can just receive the native token. Uh, ensure uh, it's receiving enough token, save some parameters, the per, uh, the period, how, how, how many times the payment should happen, in, and the destination, the receiver uh, address. Then you can just use the schedule um, smart contracts to schedule a call. So in this case, you call itself, this contract itself. Uh, the value is zero in this case. Uh, the guest limit, storage limit, just passing some big enough number to get things working. And the period, uh, then the input data. So we want to call the pay function. So we just encode with signature the pay function without any arguments. And in the pay function, we don't want anyone just call us. So we'll make sure the sender is the, the smart contract itself so other people can call us to trigger early pay. And if the remaining count is equal to one, so this is the last call of the pay. Um, in this case, uh, it will just self-destruct, send everything to the uh, recipient address, and at the same time destroy this contract. Just be a nice citizen uh, to free up unused uh, to free up unused contracts uh, to save some storage usage. Um, otherwise, we will just send this amount of money to the two and reduce remaining count and schedule another call to be called later. Yep, so this is uh, basically the scheduler call smart contract. Uh, very simple, uh, very easy to use the scheduler feature. And in the unit test, well, we have some unit tests, uh, similar setup. So let's also deploy uh, this to your local testnet and run the unit test to verify if everything works. Uh, because uh, this assumes uh, the, uh, the unit test is run with instant seeding, so that it will generate a new block um, when the new transition is uh, entered in a transition pool. So uh, in this case, we're using a system remark smart uh, transition to trigger a new block. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the all the most sort of example. So we also have Oracle, uh, which is also uh, a very similar scheduler. You, you just offer the simple simple interface, uh, get price, and you can use this to get the um, to access the price data from Oracle. Uh, 
So you can in in our wiki we should have documents of all the system smart contracts. So of, of all the address, uh, they are also available um, in the Kala EVN here as well. So you can just try those smart contracts uh, in the Kala EVN. Yeah. So that is um, yeah most all the things I want to show you. So basically, you can use a Kala EVN. Um, so I call it, uh, the EVM playground to uh, deploy and run your smart contracts to try things. You can use Remax to build, uh, to just do your um, smart contract development. You can even just deploy them to the JS um, step inside Remax for debugging other things. If they are not using the native feature, unique feature of Archive event, and just compile them and and save the JSON file upload to the Akala EVN to be executed. Or you can just using uh, the Waffle to build um, your smart contracts and write a simple script using the uh, using the body JS to deploy uh, your smart contracts to uh, our public testnet or your local own local testnet. And, and this will work with your existing ESAS JS project. 